Hey, you think I won't have to look at your ugly faces till we meet Jinky in the train well, next week? Three sailors on a seven-day leave. What can happen to them? Well, one has a girl, so anything can happen. Another has a doting mother, so aside from gaining a lot of weight, almost nothing can happen. The third has seven days and nights, a welcome home parties planned, so who knows what can happen. But, besides the logical and normal expectations of sailors on leave, each of these men will have a moment utterly beyond the normal and utterly outside all logic. A moment when all the rules of existence will no longer apply. Sheila? Hmm? Well, I was thinking, um, let's not wait. Let's get married this leave, eh? We can't, Johnny. We've got to go and meet your people. Well, I could get a special license. See, uh, oh, suppose I got sent abroad or something like that. Johnny, you didn't say anything. Well, I mean, uh, you know, we're going to rejoin the fleet soon at Scarpa Flow. We finished our refit. The thing is, um, I've only got four more days and, uh, that's all it is, Johnny. It's long enough for us to get engaged, but married, that's different. It's something you want to plan and look forward to and... Yeah. I suppose four days isn't very long, really, is it? But you'll not count the days, Johnny Watson. I'll go and make some tea. Yeah. Yeah, then we can get out before your mum and dad come back. Here, you got any of that shortbread left? I like that. Communicare reports heavy fighting around Tobruk and Saloum. <coughs> and here is an item which has just come in. The Admiralty regrets to announce that HMS Hood was sunk by enemy action in the early hours of this morning. According to the Admiral statement, the Hood went down Sheila. almost instantly. The Hood's gone down, they've sunk the Hood. What if it's just on the wireless? Oh, well, that's impossible. Said it. Yes, Sheila went down straight away. 1,500 men drowned. Fires were started and that's, that's almost the entire ship's brought. company. All of our aircraft returned I, I can't understand why they didn't tell me to report back for duty. It doesn't make sense. 1,500 men. What else did it say? Nothing. I knew that. But, Johnny, the hood's at Rosyth, wasn't she? If she'd been bombed, we'd have had an alert here. It's only ten miles away. Unless she put to sea. We've only just come out of dry dock. They couldn't have refueled her in that time. Johnny, are you sure it was the hood? Of course I'm sure. How can I make a mistake about a thing like that? The hood. That's what he said, the hood. Early this morning. But, Johnny... If it had happened this morning, they wouldn't have announced it without informing the next of kin. They never do. Look, I just heard it on the wireless. What are you going to do? I'm going to find out what's happened. I'll call the BBC. My Uncle William's an engineer there. We'll soon settle this. I can't understand why they didn't call me. Trouble, but it's not on the typescript of the news summary. How could it possibly be in the recording? You know, Sheila, I've already violated every security regulation in the book by just letting you into the building. Do you want your old uncle to end up on the chopping block in the Tower of London? Please, Uncle Bill, what harm could there be in it? None. Come along. Here is the news, and this is Jeremy Smith reading it. Libya. Today's 8th Army communique reports heavy fighting around Tobruk and Saloum. <coughs> this is it. Aircraft of Bomber Command raided Bremen last night. Fires were started... Hey, man, that's all right. Can you put it back? Detroit. All of them. 
reports heavy fighting around Tobruk and Saloum. <coughs> Aircraft of Bomber Command raided Bremen last night. Fires were started and harbor installations destroyed. It was there, All right of after it coughed. Safely. The Admiralty announces that units of Mediterranean well. Thank you. The fear of death can be a very potent thing. The mind under stress. That's understandable. Do you think so? Johnny, let's go. It was there. I thought I'd pop down to the air raid warden's post, have a chat with Dad, perhaps a game of poker. It's a bit lonely for you, isn't it, Ma? Dad working nights and all that. Oh, get used to it. There's neighbours and... You coming home? Got that to look forward to. George, the time's gone so quick. I've got three days, yeah? Come on, Ma, cheer up. It's not like you to be like this. How's me best girl, eh? This is mine. <laughs> oh, that's better. That's what I want to see. George, you're not keeping anything from me, are you? What do you mean? About where you're going after this, your, your ship. Look, I've told you, scarp a flow. Oh, look, uh, come off it, Ma. We'll worry about it when the time comes, eh? Well, I mean, it's not as if I were on submarines or corvettes or something, is it? Well, Dad's the one you ought to worry about. It's a lot safer in Scarpa Flow than here with all these bombs and things. Oh, come on. I'll be back in an hour, eh? Let's see it. Let's see it. George? Yeah, it's on crooked. Right? Dad's there going to be a poker game tonight? Thought you might stay home with your mother. Just this one evening. Dad, how is it with Mum, eh? I don't know. It's only since you've been back this time. Of course, she's been through a lot. Bombing and all. I'll have to sleep in there. The one thing she lives for is you coming home. This time, I think it's all been a bit too much for her. No sooner she gets used to having yeah, you around. I and... know. I stay in this evening, eh? See you in the morning. Righto, George. And you? What are you talking about? I dream of it, George. 
every night since you got up. And just now I dropped off. But it was all so clear. <laughs> now don't say anything. to tell you, George. It's... It's a warning, George. You, you can't ignore a thing like that. It, it must be sent for a reason. All the time your dad was out in the Blitz. Uh, during the First War, I, I always knew it'd be all right. I've always known. I don't know what you're talking about. Well... This knocking at the front door. The, the boy with the telegram. One of them telegrams, you know. It's always the same. Your son. Your son. Missing. Believed killed. In HMS Hood. And the date. May 24th. You can see the day it's that. Oh, for pity's sake, Ma. I don't rejoin my ship until the 22nd. George, you've got to eat a warning like that. You know what your trouble is, don't you? You're bomb happy. You spend so much time in shelters, wondering if you've got a home or a husband or any friends left. You're like everyone else in Britain. You've got death on the brain. <laughs> now, you've been keeping this to yourself all this time, spoiling my leave, haven't you? Yeah. Well, we're going to make up for that. We're going out, you and me, to every pub in the district. And let's have no more of this nonsense, eh? So, take off your cardigan, put on your Sunday dress, do your hair, me best girl, eh? Like. Oh, George. Hey. Ah, Peter. But that's ridiculous. I haven't thought about Peter for years. Oh, uh, really? You haven't asked anything yet, Robin. You pray. No, of course not. Um, when's my birthday? What month? Jay? Hey. Ten. January. Not bad. Quite correct. <laughs> F. O. U. R. Ah. January 4. That is my birthday. You're in touch. <laughs> You're moving. <laughs> I'm not. It's electricity. More like you're the subconscious. <laughs> well, let's ask you something else. Yes, go on, Robin. Uh, all right, let's think. Um, I know about your ship. Yes, right. Uh, will I be going into action soon? No. Well, uh, in three months' time, then. No. Yeah. No action at all. Six months. No. A year, then. No. You're going to have a nice, easy war. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting up in the Orkneys with all those cows. You know the system? When you start talking to the cows, the Navy gives you a week's leave. When the cows start talking to you, they send you home. <laughs> <laughs> Does this mean I'm going to live to a ripe old age? Yes. yes. What, by yourself? Oh, let's ask it. And don't push it. <laughs> you've got there. Hey, Jack, that's my paper. Do you mind? Look, buy your own paper if you want. Look, mate, give me my paper back, will you? Hey, look. Yeah. <laughs> so might me.
Hello, Johnny boy. I've been looking for you, wondering if you're on the train. Robin's in the buffet. Come on, let's... What's the matter? George. Do you... Do you believe that people can see into the future? What do you mean? Well, what does that say? Big battle for Tobruk. Oh. Now, suppose... Suppose you looked at that headline... Suddenly, quite unexpectedly... And it said... Now, you knew it said... Hood sunk. All feared lost. Oh, wait a minute. Now, what if this hadn't happened to you once, but twice? Georgie, we've been mates a long time, you know me. Something's going to happen to the hood, Georgie. It's going to go down. Something's going to happen, I'm sure. Do you need a good, strong cup of tea? Come on, let's join Robin. Yeah, but don't you see, that's the point. You see, it wouldn't matter if it only happened to me, but it's him as well. I tell you, it doesn't mean nothing. It was only a dream she had. I wish I hadn't mentioned it to you. Well, what's the odds? Anyway, I'm absolutely certain nothing whatever's going to happen to the hood. No, I've been taking a little look into the future myself. You know, the old wine glass and all the letters and all that. Well, I'll tell you what it told me. I won't see any action for at least a year, and I'm going to live to a ripe old age. It's my forecast, and I've no reason to doubt it. Now, if nothing whatever's going to happen to me, how the heck can anything happen to you two? White heather, lad. White heather brings good luck. Right, what makes you think we're superstitious? There's magic in the heather, real magic. I gathered it myself, as it should be gathered, with the saying of old spells, as old as the glen this came from. <laughs> Can you tell fortunes? Oh, I, I, show me a man's hand, I'll read it like a book. All right, read that, tell me what you see. Nothing but happiness, sir, happiness and contentment. No danger. I mean in the immediate future. Oh, not a bit, sir. Nothing but happiness and good fortune. You'll die in your bed at 95 with your grandchildren all around you. <laughs> you know, I see. Now you have a go. Oh, no, not me. Oh, go on, don't be daft. Oh, there we are. Be all right, don't worry. Yeah, heard the latest. We got two hours' notice to sail. Us and the Prince of Wales. What? I tell you, there's a regular flap on it, something pretty big. Yeah. That means we'll be at sea on the 24th. The date my mum saw in a dream. Yes, we will. In an empty sea. Now shut up about it. Nothing's going to happen to me, so nothing's going to happen to you. Right now, let's get aboard. Signalman Hughes? Come on, get moving. Hughes! There's a movement order. You've been posted for officer training, Portsmouth. Now take your kid over to the transport office and they'll give you a railway warrant. Come on, you two!
That's one for the book, isn't it? Chair, Johnny. See you then, eh? On May 24th, 1941, in the gray early morning, His Majesty's ship Hood, along with other units of the Royal Navy, engaged the powerful German battleship Bismarck in the Denmark Strait. A shell from the Bismarck struck the Hood in her after magazine with its store of ammunition. One minute later, when the smoke had cleared, she had disappeared from the surface of the sea, taking with her 1,500 sons of England. There were only three survivors of this tragedy. Or more properly, we should say there were four. And here's one. Actor Robin Hughes, one-time signalman of HMS Hood, later Lieutenant Commander Hughes, destroyer captain. The lucky young man who was ordered away from death. I don't think I really believe in luck, John. Well, I don't either, really, but why don't you? Well, maybe because I'm Welsh. The Welsh, traditionally, are, are given to things psychic. In all my life, I've had experiences, dreams, premonitions, some good, some bad, but most of them come true. For instance, uh, I was in a bookstore once, many miles from where my father lay ill. I had a chilling sensation. And in that instant, I, I knew he was dead. I found myself holding a, an old French diary, and it had fallen open at my mother's birthday, April the 4th. And there was a single entry in French, Je suis veuve. Je suis veuve. It means, I am a widow. Extraordinary. But most of us, sooner or later, make a contact with the world that lies beyond our understanding, don't we? Now Robin Hughes joins me in a salute to the hood and to the valiant men who perished with her. <laughs> 